when I was a kid and, and when most people were kids, you could just wake up on the day of a game and think, I'm going to go to a match today and do it. It should be about supporters going and, and enjoying their day and it being affordable and that's, that, that's what we strive to do here and that's, that's why we set up the football club. idea to set AFC Liverpool come from? It came about when the Premier League decided to inter or wanted to introduce the 39th game. Uh, that showed more than anything that football now, the powers that be are just solely interested in money. You know, the idea of having Liverpool versus Bournemouth in Singapore or Everton versus Manchester City in Kuala Lumpur, that as a normal league game, that's not what football should be about. It shouldn't be about that type of thing. It should be for, you know, the the end of the day supporters and people like all of us were the people that made it made it big and successful and it was just being taken away from us so we decided that really you know the cost of football nowadays the idea that they want to just move it round and do what they will with it it was getting too much so we decided to you know the only way we could do something about it is just make our own football club and that's that's basically what we did. There was a general conversation about how the uh, the, the fans uh, uh, are basically being sort of taken out, the local fans are being taken out of the equation at Premier League level um, and you know obviously the increase in ticket prices was still it was a factor at the time as well and so the general sort of uh, discussion was about sort of how you used to be able to go as with your mates and pay a few quid and go in the boys pen and, and that sort of stuff at Anfield and there wasn't really the availability anymore to sort of do that and it was people were being priced out um, so it's basically the the whole aim was to recreate that at a non-league level uh, and make it an affordable football club. I was here when the, the club was first set up uh, nearly 10 years ago now. I came in as the assistant manager for uh, uh, Derek Gulden, who was the manager at the time. And then obviously the opportunities come up. The first team job came up to apply and uh, obviously went through the interview process and I've been lucky enough to be, to be given the job now. So uh, hopefully take the club into their, their anniversary with a little bit of success. Old man of the group, Michael? Yeah, one of them, yeah. I think there's Wes the only other lads a year older than me, 32. Dragging the average age up. Yeah, that's yeah. Bit of experience, I'd say. Though. Yeah, you've been brought in as the captain as well, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been been hard to start with. I think we had 12 at our very first coaching session, so it's just been basically phone calls, rebuilding, um, people speaking to one another, players, and we've we've generated a, a good good team together now. Once they start gelling, we'll we'll start to see the uh, the re repercussions of that. What are the lads like? You know what? We've only been together four weeks, but they're unbelievable. You know what I mean? It's, it's, boss, it's boss banter. Yeah. It's absolute boss banter, yeah. Because we're a new group of lads, not many of us have played together before. Organising little nights out, you know, little, little bevy after the game, things like that. And because I am one of the older lads, sometimes, you know, to get like a little inside when he's not in the changing room, get a player's perspective of the, of the group and stuff. Where did you play, mate? And what, Centre mid. And what's your football background then? What leagues and le level have you played um, at? I was at, when I was a kid, I was at Everton and stuff like that. And then I went on to Crew and then uh, at youth, kind of like 17, 18, I was at Chester. And then the past few years, I've just been playing like the Liverpool Premier League and then just came down here this summer. Well, I've played in, for most of the local non league teams in one corner town, Bootle, Remeke. And first time playing for AFC though, but say this is the best the best setup out of a lot of them. What's your style of football like, Chris? What would we expect to see from AFC Liverpool this season? Um, predominantly I like to play from the back, um, play through the thirds. Um, I like a lot of movement from me, me forward players and without the ball when we haven't got it, I like to press us, get the ball back as quick as we can. Ideally I'd like us to play play the ball on the floor and, and get the ball moving and be entertaining for, for the people that are paying to come and watch. Is it what you think about them playing two touch and then swatting the ball up in the air then behind you as you're trying to get a passing game sorted? But the fun element, as I say, make sure that they enjoy their game is, is the main thing, isn't it? <laughs> On speaking to the lads, their target, they want to finish fifth. If, if they do gel as quickly as they possibly can, I think we've, we've got a good chance of finishing. Uh, in, a, in a, at least mid-table this year. Young lads, well, from what I've seen training, I think we're definitely pushing for the top, top six. And then I think we're going to get better. You'll get better week by week. Because as I say, it's a new team, so we're only going to improve the more we know each other. I reckon we can go playoffs. Got a young team as well, and I think later on the season it'll start to gel and uh, 
we could come good, yeah. We move the ball. Every time we've got it, we keep that ball moving. Don't slow the game down unless we're 3 4 nil. Then you take your time and you do doing things. Can you play forwards? Don't get involved in stupid little incidents. Walk away. Let them lose their mind having a pop at you, having a pop at the referee. But like you said yesterday on Thursday, don't be afraid of appealing for things. Appeal for it. Be loud. Make people take notice of us. We are the team that's Liverpool, not them. Us. We're representing the city. Be a fucking winner today, okay? Come on, lads. The FA Cup. It is still special, you know, it is It is what we all grew up knowing, it is the world's greatest club cup. I you know the way the football's gone now and, you know, you, you buying and selling players for the place of like a hospital and things like that. But our level of football, and to be fair, like quite a few levels above us as well. The prize money from the FA Cup is is a lifeline. You know, it used to be the case that quite a few years ago, and probably maybe probably for some clubs now, as soon as they got knocked out the FA Cup, um, they cut their wage budget because they were dependent on it. A lot of clubs are depends on it. You know, if we'd, if, we'd, if we'd have beaten Midland, you know, if we'd have gone maybe two or three rounds into it, then that's probably like a third of your year's worth of money, just off two or three games. When you get teams like Havens and Waterloo, who got drawn away at Anfield, that's a dream tie. If I play at Anfield and it's a full house, then I'd get probably about a half of however much was taken on that day ticket-wise. So if, even if all the tickets were 20 quid, um, you know, we cop for however many hundred thousand that is. And 450 grand, let's say at 45,000. Well, yeah, 450 grand. So let's say, you know, if you're, if you're at our level of football, that pays for us for the next 10 years. How many fans are you getting to each game? Uh, probably between 150 to 200. Um, obviously, sometimes it depends on the opposition, whether they bring a decent amount as well. But we're there as a, an alternative to uh, actual Liverpool, you know, and, and we provide affordable football and, and a family experience at a non-league level. So, you know, we want more people to become engaged with that and just to, to come and see what we can do. And, you know, we, we do put a decent product out on the pitch, so it's uh, it's, it's good for everyone to, to sort of get involved with it. What are the days out like? What are the ways like for AFC? Boss. It's, it's just really good to go to some of these places that you've just never heard of. You know, if you go into Padium and Daisy Hill and all these all these weirdly named teams, and you, you go and you just you just find in all these little villages a bit of an ale trail going on as well. You have a few beers. The away, away days like it's the same. They're the same at, at any football club. You know, whether it's whether you're with Liverpool going to Stoke and having a boss day, or you could come with us to I don't know Padium, and have just as just the same amount of laughs. That's the people that make it like most things. You, know, you can go to places and you will have a laugh. I mean, we've got people that follow us that are like, that are very funny. At the end of the day, when you come and watch and you see the supporters and, that, and how it affects, how, you know, because the, the, the Liverpool supporters mostly so they're passionate about the football and you want to see it. And when you see, when you see how they react and the enjoyment that they get from it, um, that's that's why you do it and that's why you carry on. When I left school many many years ago, football was my game, obviously, and uh, I've always been a follower of Liverpool Football Club. I'm retired now and I've always found it's a bit more expensive uh, to watch the likes of Liverpool. It's very easy to come along and you can just walk in um, five minutes before the game and find a nice comfortable seat to watch the game. AFC's a cheap movie. It has been hard, it's been long, and it, but ultimately it's enjoyable. Because you see that you know you, when people come to the game, they go away and you know they're having a laugh and a joke, and they're doing that because of what of what me and, and the rest of us have done. And sometimes that's the type of feeling that even like you know money can't buy things like that, knowing that you that you, you're bringing you're bringing things to people's lives that otherwise they wouldn't have. Uh, we have a lot of well wishes on things like Twitter, and you know there's a, there's a decent following there, but we wanted to convert that to people coming into the ground. 400, 500 followers that we gain it doesn't sound a lot, but at our level it's massive and over the summer that's the kind of growth that we've seen. Events are going to happen anyway, so things like the, the BBC um, covering us for example, yourselves getting involved, they were all you know happening but it's what we what we did with it really and that's that's where we've seen the growth. 
So success, I'd say, has been getting people involved. But, you know, as Greg mentioned before, we need to convert that now to people through the gate and with, the, with your help, people buying shirts and stuff like that. Our basic costs at this level of football, you know, obviously we haven't got our own ground, so we have to pay ground rent. You're talking probably around 30 grand, something like that. It'd be easy for us to say, well, we'll put, just put the price up on the gate and make people pay for it to get us that money. Well, that's not the way that it works, you know. We're supporter owned, so our supporters decide at the AGM every year how much it's going to be. So, you know, we started in 2008, it was a fiver. It's 2017, it's still a fiver. So, you know, if that, and that, that's, that's, that's voted for, that's what people want. So in, with that in mind, then we have to, as, as a board and as the people that run it, we then have to find the rest of that money because, you know, that's what we want to do. We want to keep it as affordable as possible. We'd like to keep it for a fiver for as long as we could. But it's a case of making sure that the right people pay the money rather than unlike, you know, uh, the top flight now, it's the supporters you have to fork out. We see it the other way that we try and get as much as we can through off the field stuff. So business and, and all that type of stuff, they pay out rather than people who come to the game. Kit look good on you. Kind Looks of good, you've done your hair. Looks no, good on you, mate. It's the, it's the old Liverpool colour, isn't it, do you know what I mean? What's he just put? <laughs> Evan. <laughs> Not into it. <laughs> you don't like that lava bird right by your house? Nah, I don't like this colour, this yellow, this like mustard yellow. Do you like the red one, though? <laughs> nah. What are you just doing playing Just have to play in them. <laughs> <laughs> Originally, when we started, we, we, started out, we played the Prescott Cables. Um, and we were there for I think f four years, maybe five, I'm not sure. Um, and then one time we, 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 we drew Marine in the Liverpool Senior Cup and we had a little chat that night and then, you know, one thing led to another and, and here we are now. I mean, no disrespect to Prescott, it's, it's, it's a great ground and without them we wouldn't be here, it's as simple as that. Um, but I'm sure even they, they'd be willing to admit that, you know, this is a much better facility. Um, you know, I think yesterday it was um, the groundsman here come third in groundsman of the year competition. So in, in, in you've seen the pitch and what it's like here. You know, it's it's, it's a great place to, to, to play football. And you know, eventually when we get when we get to sort ourselves out with our own ground, you know, you'd want it to be of, of this standard. And that is that the dream to get yourselves a, a proper football ground for AFC Liverpool? Yeah, of course it is. I mean, you know, that's the whole point of having a football club. You know, we're the, obviously we ground here because we don't have that. So we we just keep working away until we, until until we do get our own grounds, and then you know, obviously then once it's got it, so if the the club can bed down, whatever that is, then it can grow to whatever its owners or the members want it to grow into. You know, for me, I want to see it at least. You set yourself targets, and, I, and once we get our own grounds, the first thing, first thing for me is to become the biggest non-league side in Merseyside. So, you know, go, you know, go past Marine, take on Southport, and you know, if Tranmere is still there, then start to rival them in the conference. And you, you just, it can, it can go as far as the people who own it want it to, and that's 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 where the club's ambition lies. So, if people want it, you know, if people are happy to pot around in the northwest counties, then that's what it'll do. I don't think they are because you know, as a football supporter. You want your team to always progress. You want to win cups. You want to win leagues. You want you want you want your days out. It's been a good experience. Uh, it's a thankless task being a volunteer at a non-league club, but it's it's rewarding as well. <laughs> You've got to keep that up now. Yeah. We can't just keep going up and down and up and down and up and down as a group. Now we've got to get that structure and that consistency, which is going to get you in them positions that you want to be in at the end of the season. All right, well done, brilliant, Stewie. Anything from you? We're in the mix. <laughs> Good night, Jay. Quality, everyone.